Apply defibrillation pad. Connect cable. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. I'm clear. You're clear. Shock We're all clear. Shocking. Now that you practice CPR, it's time to learn how CPR and an AED work together. In this section, you will learn AED use, safety precautions, and special considerations. The AED should be ready to use, located near trained rescuers. Accessories such as extra pads, pediatric pads, or adapter, an extra battery, CPR barrier, a towel, gloves, and razor should be stored with the AED. Make sure the AED is ready for use. Follow manufacturer's guidelines for regular inspections of the AED. Make sure the expiration dates on the pads and batteries are current and there is no visible damage to the unit. Sometimes the AED identifies a problem that you will need to troubleshoot and fix. Common AED troubleshooting prompts include check the pads, press down firmly, check the cable connection, replace with new pads, low battery, replace the battery, and patient movement. Do not touch or move the patient. Stop the gurney or vehicle before analyzing or shocking the patient. Now we'll focus on pad placement and how to properly clear the patient for defibrillation. When there are two rescuers, the first rescuer continues CPR while the second rescuer prepares the AED. Open the case and turn on the AED. Follow the AED prompts. Apply pads to the patient's bare chest. Peel off the backing and apply the sticky side of the pad according to the picture. Apply one pad to the right upper chest and the other pad to the left side of the chest, just below the armpit. Press the pads down firmly on the patient's skin. The AED can also be used for children. Victims aged 1 through 8 or weighing less than 55 pounds require a smaller electrical shock to defibrillate the heart. Some AED models use pediatric pads. Other AEDs use an energy reducer, switch, or key. If pediatric-specific equipment is not available, use the AED with adult pads. After the pads are applied, you may be prompted to shock the patient. Clear the patient by making sure that no one is touching the patient or the patient's clothes. Position yourself over the victim to warn other rescuers and bystanders not to come too close. Extend your arm out over the victim and look to make sure you're not touching the patient or their clothes. Then loudly state, I'm clear. Make sure that no one else is touching the patient or their clothes and state, You're clear. Check one more time to make sure no one is touching the patient or their clothes. Look up and down the entire patient, then state, We're all clear. Oxygen clear. Once the victim is properly cleared, press the shock button. Shock delivered. It is safe to touch the patient. Begin CPR. After the shock, resume CPR, starting with compressions. The AED will prompt you to immediately resume CPR after a shock. After two minutes, the AED will prompt you to stop CPR so that it can analyze the patient's heart rhythm and determine if another shock is needed. Rescuers should follow the prompts and continue the sequence of two minutes of CPR and AED use until the victim begins to move, advanced rescuers arrive and are ready to take over, or no shock is advised. If the victim begins to move, place him in the recovery position and monitor breathing. Do not remove the pads. You're almost ready to practice using the AED. First, we'll discuss some key safety precautions. Remember, when the AED is analyzing or shocking, do not touch the patient. As we stated earlier, you must stop CPR and clear the victim before analyzing or shocking the heart. Make sure that no one is touching the patient or the patient's clothes. Consider the surface the victim is lying on. If the victim is lying in a puddle or pool of water, move the patient to a drier area before using the AED. Rain, snow, and small amounts of water are not a danger. However, water or excessive sweat on the victim's chest can interfere with defibrillation and create a hazard for rescuers. Quickly dry the patient's chest before attaching the pads. Press down firmly on the pads to make sure they are attached securely to the skin. Another potential hazard is when oxygen or other compressed gases are present. These gases can be ignited when pads are not fully attached to the skin. If you are using oxygen during a rescue, Turn it off or move the mask at least three feet away from the victim before defibrillating. Shock advised. Stand clear. I'm clear. You're clear. We're all clear. Oxygen clear. Shock now. Press the red button now. Shocking. 
Along with these safety precautions, there are additional considerations for AED use. In this segment, we'll discuss AED use on small children, what to do with patients who have a very hairy chest, and when a victim has an implanted device or medication patch. To use the AED on a child age one through eight or weighing less than 55 pounds, use pediatric pads or an adapter to reduce the amount of energy delivered. Do not use pediatric equipment on an adult. Do not overlap or cut the pads. For smaller children, certain AED manufacturers recommend placing one pad on the child's chest and the other on the back. For front to back pad placement, place one pad in the center of the chest between the nipples. Place the second pad in the center of the upper back opposite the front pad. Follow your AED manufacturer's guidelines on pediatric pad placement. Chest hair can limit the contact between the electrode and the skin, making it difficult for the AED to analyze the cardiac rhythm and deliver a shock. When a patient has a hairy chest, quickly shave the area before applying the pads. If the pads have already been placed and the AED can't analyze the heart rhythm, press the pads firmly to the skin. If that doesn't fix the problem, remove the pads with a quick motion to remove chest hair, then apply a new set of pads. Some patients have a surgically implanted device, such as a pacemaker or internal cardiac defibrillator. You will see a round or square raised lump under the skin of the chest or the abdomen. It is safe to use the AED for these patients. If an implanted device is located where you want to place the pad, simply adjust your pad placement one inch away from the implanted device and use the AED as normal. A patient may also have an adhesive patch with medication embedded into it. Using an AED over the medication patch can burn the patient's skin and decreases the effectiveness of the AED. Use a gloved hand to remove any medication patch that may interfere with pad placement. Wipe the skin clean and dry with a towel before attaching AED pads. Okay, let's do a quick review. Do not move or touch the victim while the AED is analyzing. Clear the victim and turn off the oxygen or move the oxygen mask at least three feet away before shocking. Dry any water from the chest and move the victim if they are lying in a pool or in a puddle of water. Shave a hairy chest before applying the pads. Adjust pad placement as needed for any implanted devices. Remove medication patches that interfere with pad placement and wipe the skin clean before attaching the pads. I'm clear. You're clear. We're all clear. Oxygen clear. Shocking. Shock delivered. Begin CPR. He's moving. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Now, it's your turn to practice using the AED. Work on coordinating CPR and AED use. Practice pad placement, clearing the patient, and troubleshooting AED problems. <laughs>